well, how to get better at chess, watch the people that are better than yourself. So we're in again with the higher rated players, having a look at their games. And uh, it's just pushed onto the bishop with the pawn. Bishop's probably going to have to go back. So losing a bit of tempo. I don't think it'll go there. So, yeah. And so is the idea. It's moving a bit fast. Okay. So he's ready to go and castle. So here, maybe pushing the pawn onto the knight. But he maybe doesn't want the knight to go here. So he might not do that. Looking maybe for a fianchetto, maybe a two on one on the pawn here. With the knight. Yeah. Or he could consider just pushing the pawn up. Yeah, so you could consider that, but then the pawn will just push down onto the knight. Knight can then come in here, but then obviously his knight takes, and then the pawn will be coming to the side. So that might be too messy. He's also got the knight attacking the knight, but there's nothing protecting the knight at the moment, so the bishop moving here would protect the knight. So I'm just trying to catch up with what they potentially can do as black. White in his own right, he's got the bishops here all lined up in defence mode. But he's looking to attack something, he, he wants to make some space because this pawn is going to be an annoyance pushing onto his knight here. So he might want to make space for the knight to be able to jump forward rather than backwards. He might make that space by moving the bishop to here. No, he's actually attacking the pawn. So he's, he's inviting the pawn to actually go up and attack the knight. Yeah, so obviously then he must have ideas where he wants his knight to go from there. Maybe he's just going to bring his knight back out to come back in. Maybe something like that. Oh, he's gone the other side, so he's actually attacking the pawn. So, I mean, that's I was just about to say that's easily defended by pushing the pawn here, but they both move very quick there. So, if he captures, captures, so he loses two pawns. So, is he going to bring something to support the pawn, or is he going to push this pawn for the bishop to support the pawn? Yeah, with the diagonal through supporting because you don't want to lose two pawns in that exchange. I'm still trying to catch up, but um, I think we're getting there. I think that's the better continuation, other than the queen coming here supporting the pawn. But you don't really want the queen supporting because then he's got the diagonal through onto the queen, discover check with the knight, so that won't be a good one. I think the simple move would be to push here. Then if he pushes down with his knight, then the knight's got free reign to come here and attack the bishop. Let's see what they do. Already, if you don't actually observe other players' games or you know higher rated games or whatever, um, um, it's not saying that you have to. It's just it seems to help me. Um, in the early days, all I read was books. Ooh, captured. So nothing that I suggested. So the knight takes back. And I would say, for me personally, I would say that that's given White a little bit more strength. Now he's gone for the Fianchetto with the two on one on the pawn. But I would probably favour White's position just from that pawn take. I think the pawn push up, we'll come back to that in the evaluation to see if we're right or not, um, just for our own game. Um, but I think the pawn push would have been a slightly stronger, better. So got to remember, come back to the pawn push. Move number 12, something like that. So, um, if I'm playing as black here, which now that their position doesn't look as good, 
but it's white's turn so white will again he's still got this bishop coming here resting here but is he just waiting for these bishops to just last until the end game type thing and look for the knights to do some destruction because there is this square here which is now really he can occupy that quite nicely with a knight on the outpost type situation here and nothing being able to move it apart from the bishop maybe or something yeah it's even got the bishop that can sit there as well it's got all these free pieces that he's got manned around that area so that's why I was saying it's pretty strong now for white from that pawn take So key square, see whether or not white uses it. Um, queen's coming down, looking at the diagonal towards there. So you've got to be mindful of that. But like I say, the key square here is b5. Looking at the pressure that that can create. It's not near the king's area, so maybe they might negate it and they might not be interested in that. But I think that's probably a way in, in terms of putting pressure on the pieces and the squares. So it's black's turn so maybe they should try and get rid of the ownership of that area maybe put the bishop here attacking his bishop to try and get rid of the strength from that square but he's not done that he's brought his knight out so i'll keep pointing to this square he's brought his knight out maybe he's going to be pushing the pawn up but then it's blocking the knight's transition so maybe that won't happen maybe the knight comes here instead then what's it doing because this pawn will just come down and attack it so that might not be a good situation maybe he's looking at bringing the knight across here yeah attacking the pawn three times yeah because he's got the bishop on there and he's got the knight on there as well so that might be their way of trying to counteract the deadly square here and the rooks come across it's not utilizing the square at the moment is he thinking potentially this pawn is going to be weak because it's supporting coming through and attacking this area I'm not sure really yeah, they're supposed to own the open files, I suppose he's gone for the owning and the knight's gone to the position that we said. Just putting the three on, on one there. Yeah, so that's a lot of pressure on that pawn. I suppose his pawn can drop here. Because like a minor piece taking the pawn and a pawn taking back, that's not going to black's not going to let that happen so after that he's got the knight on this pawn here but the queen is defending at the moment dark square bishop's a little bit jammed in if he did push though his knight would drop here then he's got a two on one with his rook and his knight got the queen queen could just move to the side So there's a few things here but they're all uh, simple and straightforward there's no no magic to it so he's in a deep think at the moment again I would apologize for the arrows but this is helping my thought processes looking at the continue potential continuations the better continuations in my eyes and then I try and transpose that into a game or two afterwards. <laughs> so as we say, it's why it's to pawn supporting the pawn. Or sometimes they can just go, well, I'll just move the targeted pawn out of the way and just push it down yeah, to this square here. Then if this pawn takes, 
the knight can move out of the way with the discovered check on our queen. Where can it go? Could it attack a piece? I suppose it could go to the square that I was on about here. And the queen's under pressure. Okay, let's remove them. So he's not going for nothing of none of those. He's gone for his bishop in front of his own pawn. Yep. So blocking any power that this pawn could potentially have from coming down and working and fighting and defending against um, attacks on squares and pieces. That potentially might have been the letdown move of the game for white. Mm, yeah. So I think when you're transitioning from your opening through to your mid game stage, if you like, um, you've got to allow your pawns a bit of freedom to, to run around. And you put a piece in front like this, you then have to do another move and another move to actually make that pawn active. So what you're doing is just congesting your king in now. Yes, it's in a safe area, but it's, there's no mobility around it. So I think he may have given black the game by that one move. But hey, I might be wrong, but you've got to have your own thought processes. And if you love playing chess, then this is the type of thing you're going to enjoy doing. Uh, constantly just keep doing it. Every game is different and really analyse the games and put your own slant on it. Because like I've put my own slant on this and the opponents haven't done the moves that I've suggested. Apart from black with the knight move here. Yeah. Because white had that key, it's still got this key square there. It's just they've allowed black in to put threats on them. So now they're defending these threats. So they're losing time and tempo, and in my eyes, bad position created. So what's white gonna do now? Yeah, he's got options. I mean, he can push here. Well, he's, oh, he's moved his queen now. So he's moved his queen. He had options of pushing the pawn there. Let's move this queen off of the line, basically from the threat of the rook coming down. Yeah, as far as I can see. Yeah. So it's quite white's turn again. This key square has got to be utilised at some stage, but. They're panicking about this pawn. I think the pawn's just going to push down. See if it does push down, the pawn takes. It's like a free pawn. That's what they're thinking. I'm giving away a pawn. But I think that gives them a better position. It's called sacrificing. Anyway, I'll take them off. So I've got to remember, move 12 or something pushing the pawn up because this looks like it's going to be a long game it's a 15 minute 15 second game it's in the classical bracket so white to move potentially getting rid of this bishop off of this pawn somehow because he can't keep defending that throughout the game something's got to happen with this pawn or he's got to find a major attack on a, a higher piece such as this pawn coming here but then he loses that pawn again another good sacrifice though or just simply utilizing the key square that I keep mentioning so potentially this knight coming here And it frees up the rook's power onto this open half open file. That's as simple as I can get it for myself. But the majors bring out the other rook here, developing the rook on this side. 
that's definitely not a good position for the bishop as far as I can tell unless of course he's going to push this pawn down and then no he's not doing that and bring his bishop back he's not doing that he's stopping the knight from jumping here but the knight wasn't interested in doing that so that is definitely a prophylactic move but at the same time as we mentioned before his king was all congested in with this bishop move so he's given his king a little bit of a flight square yeah because they know that that's not a good position so he's developed the rook dead quick he's using his opponent's time against his opponent but then sometimes moving quick doesn't always mean you're picking the right move but he's gone for the half open file defending the pawn maybe then looking to push the pawn up or maybe this pawn still got the three on one here now he's starting to attack so we still got this situation he's got his queen, he's got his knight, he's got his bishop on there there's only three on there at the moment so there's no point in really taking sometimes he can do it to win an attack somewhere else yeah so like if the knight took and then the bishop takes back but then the knight doesn't take back something else attacks another piece like the bishop then attacks his rook to sort of like win tempos but I'm not putting lines for that because they definitely wouldn't do anything like that on oh, this rook has now moved up one oh it's getting a little bit strange now I like to say rooks don't have any place in the middle of the board it's not exactly in the middle of the ball but it's not linked up with its rook and it doesn't look best placed there I don't really see the reason for it unless of course he's going to bring it through here so that then he's got like a battery through to the queen here when this knight moves and does something like takes this pawn yeah if they're thinking along them lines then yeah that's pretty that's pretty okay-ish but it's if I can see it then I'm sure the opponent can see that type of continuation so it's white to go he's thinking now about the continuation probably the line that I've just shown here how does he get rid of that he's gonna have to just move his queen either to here or to here one of those there or there that's what I think he's probably still thinking about this as well yeah one of the knights moving here but then again they might not be thinking about that square at all it might not be of any importance to them because if you have a look at the pieces where are they aiming towards the king area you know the answer process yeah so it's burning down his tile but it is 15 minutes 15 a 15 minute 10 second game so it's a 15 minute increment so you can claw that back dead quick move the rook well we did mention about moving the rook but that was earlier on so I'm not going for any of my suggestions so this rook is probably going to get away with doing this movement here yeah for attacking the queen if he's not obviously seeing this move and the knight going here I think they may get away with it
Oh, he's not gone for it. Oh no, he's gone for basic. Oh, was there something wrong with that that I didn't see? Okay, so move 12 and move 16, 17 ish type thing from the rook move. We'll have a look at that and see if that continuation may have worked. I'm not sure, but it looks doable to me. Or is it the fact that if he does move his rook, then one of his knights just jumps to this square, putting pressure on the rook? But then the rook just goes up one, doesn't it? But then if it goes up one, then I suppose his pawn pushes down onto the pawn here. His bishop's got a discovered check on the rook. Then it can take our knight off the board. He's got a discovered check, then the rook can just take the knight. You know, but that'll be no good because his knight will take back. Oh, maybe that's why that's not good. We're still going to have a look at that. Okay, so this time it is burning down, and that's white with the initial betterish type position, and they're letting it slip away a little bit. So obvious move is to take back with the bishop. Yep, so that gets that out of the way. It's challenging this knight now to either go to this delicious square here to pre prevent the knight rook from coming here. I still believe that this is the strong position the rook coming in front of the queen no matter how we sort of slice it and now that the knight has gone yeah the bishop's replicated but with the pawn being able to take back this exchange here coming across and then still powering through to the queen with the potential for that type of action looks like it's getting a little bit stronger and stronger every every move now I've still got my eyes on that line yep oh and he's gone to the key square it's gone to the key square oh isn't that fantastic yep so that is a winning that is the winning square I think if they've done it earlier he's got a two on one now on the pawn yeah, with the knight. So the rook can no longer go there for now. Let's take these off. Ooh, this is getting interesting. Okay, the key square, as we pointed out, I'm really chuffed. Okay, so how white can, I think, win from using this key square. I mentioned that earlier on in the game. And it's just that he's lost his other bishop and stuff and that, you know, maybe if they'd have played it earlier, um, they would have been in a better shape now. But he has got a 2 on 1 on the pawn. So the bishop, potentially, is coming back to protect. Yeah, I don't think it'll go that way because then the bishop can just move back and then this pawn pushes down onto it. So the bishop comes back. Let's do that again just so we're clear. Two there. The rook is only supporting at the moment, so the bishop needs to probably come back. Which black really doesn't want to do, they don't want to be in defense mode. Yeah. Because it does have the option of pushing the pawn up, but then it captures, captures, but she's got like loads of pieces on that square, so there's no point in pushing that pawn up probably thinking now what can I attack then yeah he's still got one two three pieces protecting that pawn there's only two now attacking that pawn so he can't go for that exchange so must just bring this back 
which is a shame because they were developing a nice little attack process but because of the key square the rook has prevented the rook the knight has prevented the rook from coming across so what would whoa Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, well, well. Why didn't I just think of that either? I like, I, I'm liking this game. Yeah, not for its complexity or anything, because we're seeing certain things. But yeah, that was nice and basic. Just whipping the piece off the board. Potentially, still wanting to get this rook here, even though that this rook would take that pawn, but. Maybe the quick mm, bishop can now come and attack this knight, coming maybe this side. Once the queen takes the pot bishop, just bring the bishop here. Knight is a uh, caught between whether to stay there and just allow the pawn through, but that's weakening his area. That was a good shot. Oh, and, oh, it's all, it's all, yeah, it's all kicking off now. It's all kicking off. Oh, I'd have preferred this bishop thing, but never mind. Um, so he's pushing through. Does he take or not? Is it to his benefit to actually catch it? Oh. Okay, so there's a big attack coming on now. And um, have a look at the situation. So, again, this power coming onto this pawn it's got three on there they've only got two but he's not interested and he's just taking the pawn because he's attacking this pawn here but the queen would take if he does take that so he could he could seriously just continue with the bishop attacking this oops the bishop attacking this pawn he's only got two on there what's his idea what's his plan the rook could just come and take I yeah so it's captured does he take with the bishop or not what is the plan why did that knight take bishop take still rook takes is he looking at back rank attack I don't know I don't know why it's looking a little bit stronger let's take them off now he's got central control with his rooks this rook is here on the edge Tail of the tape, Rook could just come across here, attack the knight maybe, but yeek. This is very tense. He's got his knight that can come round here, attacking or defending. Small moves, small moves. Simple rook take, I suppose. Rook takes, queen takes. 
Rook takes, queen takes. If the queen takes, then obviously then the knight takes the pawn here. So the queen will take, will take the rook. It's not just going to leave it high and dry. Is there any other tricks? No, the king's okay. Queen down, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes. So that combination won't work. So I think it'll seem a simple rook take of the rook. The queen has to take, knight takes with a well, not with nothing. And then is there a combination whereby they can't put a check on the king and get the knight? So <clears throat> I think they get that knight, and this pawn's got free reign to go one, two, three, four. Well, as far as there, maybe. <laughs> So it looked rosy for white for a second. Oh no. Oh no. I think they've gone too fancy. I think they've gone too fancy now. Oh no, no, that no, no, that's too fancy. No. No, that's not good. The rook just taking what move was that? Move twenty six. So we've got twelve 18, 26 or something like that to look at. Oh dear, no, you see now the pawn's got power. That's not, that wasn't the way that it was supposed to work. Damn, they were doing so well as well. I was half decently okay with what was going on. Urgh. Now they've allowed the pawn to look like it's um, surviving. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, and why is time's running out now as well? But it wasn't them that did the move wrong, it was Black that did it. He's looking, going for an equalisation here. <sighs> you know, he could have taken that knight off the board as well. Ooh, what's happening? He's got eight minutes. He's got plenty of time to be thinking about the right move. Oh dear. Okay, so now it's going to come here, put a fork on the rook and the pawn. Yeah, so there and there. So the rook will just maybe go up and protect. And then his rook will come down and attack. Oh, he's gone to the far side. He's given all this scope now for White. But White's done the same thing and gone protecting something. That, he's put a 2 on 1 on the pawn, I suppose. But that either. Ooh. <sighs> all this one would have. Oh, it's, a, it's a draw. It's a draw. Knight takes. Yeah, it's a draw. Yeah. They may as well just offer a draw. Oh, it was doing so well. I had high hopes for this one to... Oh, but I believe I, f I found even more solid moves, which I feel good for. So that's a good thing. It's a draw. Well, I feel like pausing it and then just showing you the end result of it being a draw. Oh, White offered a draw, but Black declines the draw. Oh, interesting. Unless, of course, he didn't see the draw offer and he just carried on playing. Because that sometimes happens as well. Sometimes I don't see the draw offer and I just made the move. But it is a draw. How does he think he's winning this? Unless, of course, White does something totally wrong with his his pawn tempo, which would be really bad. Yeah, so the kings are just going to go side side, side side, side side. But in this case, what you can do is. The first one to actually go in the centre can sometimes actually win out, you know, when the pawns are lined up like that. I wonder if Black knows this. Not saying all the time, but sometimes it catches them by surprise. 
because one of the pawns has to take and then it sort of evens out and then maybe he can win the king dance doesn't look like he knows it though because he would have played it straight away so I think he's just going to go king oh he's gone for maybe does that win him the, the king dance does it it's more forcing in terms of well if his king if he doesn't take with his pawn then he can take here or if his king just moves to the side yeah he can just take there if his king moves around the side there then the king can move up yeah so his king moves to the side so in theory he could just move up here with his king to win the king dance because then if he captures here then the pawn captures yeah and suppose then his king comes across but then his king can move up and starts doing the circle around the king but he's not doing that either and I think the king is missing the king dance thing but it's putting pressure on this pawn because this pawn now has to take one of the pawns it's as simple as that because if he doesn't then he's going to have a pass pawn and the king won't be able to defend it very nice very nice I like it I like it yeah so he, he has mastery of the pawn structure he refused the draw because he had a feeling that somehow he was going to win out with the pawn structure why it could have done the same thing to them it's just that if you don't understand the pawn, you know the pawn ending type things, um, you can lose out. I mean, there's that technique of pushing through the center. I'm not sure if that's clear, but for me, it, I think it helps you win the the king dance. I've done it on a few of my games. Yeah, and when I say the king dance, it's that tempo of trying to avoid the kings going side to side and then winning that forward square so that their 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 king has to sort of move back. Once they start moving back, you can start challenging the pawns. So White is again stuck now. Yeah, but like I say, he should take that pawn. It sort of evens out the pawns, and this is where the king dance thing potentially could take place. Let's see if it comes into operation. You might be able to see the king dance in reality. Because in theory, his king can take the pawn. Yeah, but that's no good. I think taking the pawn here is better. Then his king moves across. King starts moving across here. Starts going up towards there. Keeps working around. Oh. oh. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm learning from this one then. I'm learning from this. This is good. I'm learning. I want, if he wins it, then I'm, I'm learning something. If he doesn't, then I'll stick with what I was just saying. he can't go so his king probably comes here to try and control this pawn is definitely not pushing up here but if his king goes across then obviously his king can go here winning a potential with king dance yeah because then his king can't come back to this square yeah so again it's a different version of the king dance liking it there we go King can't come back here, so where does he go now? And then he loses the pawn. Boom! <laughs> I like it. Beautiful King Dance. Come across here. And then obviously he's going to snap this pawn up. And he's got these two pawns. Fantastic. Well played, Black. Nice one. Okay, so um, I think White should sort of resign now, really. Um, you can get stalemate, yeah, if you get the tempo wrong. You can definitely get stalemate. So, but going across here, yeah, and then basically you can push the pawn up now because that you let him take that pawn, just push it up. because his king's come down he can't go back now so he's gonna have to capture and this pawn is just going up 
and gain a queen. And well, he can keep doing that, but it's probably better for his king to come up here now that his king's gone back. So just, oh, okay, he's not doing that. That might end up being stalemate then, just one second. He might have been too greedy. Just push here. His king still got movement. Ah, oh, yes, I see. Very clever because his king still got the square there like that. And just push this king here, and it's done. Yeah, it's not the kind of way I would have done it, but you get panicked with these situations. You think, oh, still mates coming. And he might not push his queen there. What am I doing? Take that off. So this just comes down. Just keeps going, just keeps going down, keeps, yeah, there we go. And they resigned. <clears throat> Analysis time. Whew. Okay, um, what we're doing, let's take these things off. Right, move 12, was it? Something where the rook was coming across. Let's have a look. I know this is a long, this is a long session, it's into the 40 minutes already there. So yeah, the rooks rooks across. So at this point here, take him here, and then the knight came down. So before all that happened, it was that poor move, wasn't it? What I was trying to say was, do this 